With this weekend at Decatur comes one of the highest car counts of the season, with 37 cars taking the green flag in the qualifier. It would have been 38, but Zach Meyer's car suffered an engine fire during practice, and his backup engine wouldn't start on the grid. Thus, he didn't take the green flag and will not qualify for this race. A couple of the one-off drivers have been really fast this weekend, including Sergei Yakovsky and Cesar Espinoza. However, their long-term practice speeds have left much to be desired. This week, qualifying brought one of the biggest upsets in recent memory as Sergei Yakovsky from Russia wins the pole in his number 61 Luko Elkatsev. He leads the field going into the snake and he pulls in front of Isaac Kowalczyk, the outside pole sitter. And he drives off the track a bit, but he fends off a charge from Isaac Kowalczyk. And it looks like we've got some trouble in the back there. Three cars are off. Looks like the 41 of Greg Maddox gets into Ryan Griffin and Nikos Kostopoulos and pushes them off the track. Griffin would continue on without much damage as well as Kostopoulos, although Kostopoulos gets a bit of rear-end damage, as you can see right there. Meanwhile, at the business end of the field, Sergei Yakovsky just got bumped by Isaac Kowalczyk out of the way. Kowalczyk has a run on the inside, however, Yakovsky will battle back and he will take the lead in that newly nationalized number 61. Luke Oil and a couple other Russian companies jumped on after winning the pole. So that car is looking really strong early on, but he's under fire from a couple of the top competitors. That scheme's going to run for the rest of the year. Meanwhile, in the back, Andrew Tamarzan makes contact with Edward Carroll and Joe Craig. They take each other into the wall, and Joe Craig goes over. Edward Carroll drives into the fence, and Andrew Tamarzan will continue on without damage. However, both of those cars are out of the race. Yakovsky leads on lap two. However, he drives off like he did before. However, he will keep the lead. He pulls in front of Kowalczyk, and he will defend his position, entering turn three. However, Isaac Kowalczyk's looking very hungry here. He tries to pull the inside, and he actually he bumps into Sergei Yakovsky and gets him a bit loose there. However, Yakovsky, excellent car control there. He will hold the lead on lap two, entering the S's. One car that squeaked its way into the show this week is Rick Phillips in the 16 for Tener Research and Development. He's actually the CEO of that company, and he's running a test bed for the Tener that will be run next year. However, it's not looking that fast. They must be using experimental parts or something, because he's mired back in 32nd place and not making much progress. Cody Deek is running in 4th place right now, and he gets into Isaac Kowalczyk, bumps him out of the way, entering the snake. He will take 4th place from that car, but... The two Clockwork Team Lexus cars are in front, and uh, Claire Ossier is challenging Sergei Yakovsky for the lead here in the S's. However, Yakovsky will battle back like he did against Kowalczyk a couple laps ago, and he will hold the lead. The 61 car will be returning for the European Tour at least for the next season. He might be planning some part-time American races, too. However, here on lap four, he's going to lose the lead to Claire Ossier. He breaks a bit early, and Ossier manages to squeak by on the inside along with her teammate Louis Ballard in that 11 car. He's been looking really strong this week, too. The 21 and the 11 are owned by the same company, Clockwork Team Lexus. However, that team's being bought out by Manticore Engineering for next season, who actually know what they're doing with the cars, unlike Clockwork Team Lexus, who have had some pretty questionable calls throughout the season. Another team that's been flexing their muscles this week is the uh, Retro 80 Racing Team with Stringfellow Vincent and Matthew Bueller. They managed to get both of those cars into the race, and they're running in 7th and 8th at this point, although it's a bit early, it's only lap 5. They're doing much better than they usually do. They're usually a mid-pack team running about 15th to 25th usually, but this is a great improvement. Maybe it's because they announced that they'll be returning for next season. Cesar Espinoza, the Brazilian local driver, he showed up at Mexico and performed admirably in this car, number 45 Linex Volpe. He's running in about 20th at this point. His team owner also qualified for this race in the number 40, the Linex Toyota for Golden Gear Racing, he's running in about 30th at the moment, Kenny Gartosa is. Up front, Louis Ballard makes a look on the inside for the S's, however, he doesn't have the momentum, and Claire Ossier pushes him off the track a little bit, saying, no, I'm the main driver here, you can stay back there. Isaac Kowalczyk manages to get by for second place, and he's looking really hungry. This is one of his final chances to win. After this week, we go to Phoenix, which he hasn't performed too well at Speedways at. But then after this, we go to Cleveland, where he is at a distinct advantage. He makes a challenge in the S's. However, the car will not stick on the outside, and he'll have to 
let Claire Ossier hold the position, hold the lead. However, he makes a challenge here on the inside, but the car just doesn't stick for some reason, and Claire Ossier will hold the lead entering the straight. He gets a bit fed up with this, though, and the next lap, he bumps her off the track. She slides into the grass, but Isaac Kowalczyk takes the lead as Claire Ossier starts to fall back. Louis Ballard gets by her, and Stringfellow Vincent has moved up into the top five. He's making a move around Claire Ossier for third, as you can see right there. Good run for Stringfellow Vincent in that Retro 80 racing car. Sergei Yakovsky's good run comes to an abrupt end as Blake Kamphausen spins him out of ninth on lap nine. He'll rejoin the pack in about 28th, but this is a heartbreak for that 61 team. They've tried so hard to make it to this race, and they get spun out early on. By lap 9, Isaac Kowalczyk continues to hold a lead over Louis Ballard. Stringfellow Vincent has closed the gap on Ballard for, sec for second place, and it has dragged a couple other cars, Cody Deak and Andy Lambert, to name a couple, into the battle for second place. Now, don't think that just because I'm showing all the battles up front doesn't mean that there's a battle in the back of the field as Tommy Irvin and Nate Lorenz get together there for 35th place. And Ryan Griffin and Lorenz seem to still be going at it there for about 37th or 38th place. Griffin has managed to catch up to the rear of the field after spinning off in the first lap. Now, these drivers aren't doing much to help their chances to get back up front by doing that. Louis Ballard has a run on Isaac Kowalczyk here entering the snake. He pushes Kowalczyk off the course there and manages to get on his right hand side, the inside for the next turn. And he's pushing left into Kowalczyk and Kowalczyk is going to go off the course entering turn three. Kowalczyk has to use the access course, the access road up there to manage, to manage that turn. We're going to go on board Kowalczyk. He's been screaming at his crew chief and at his spotter to go punch out Louis Ballard's crew chief or spotter or team or something like that. He's just been babbling incoherently on the uh, radio about how that was just a cheap shot by Louis Ballard. Casey Lester that same lap drives off that Dodge Racing Development team, the 13, with uh, sponsorship from Pump Energy. That's been a sinking ship all year. That car went from a that team went from a three car team to a one car team over the course of about three races and Lester's kind of gotten the butt end of that deal. He's going to Great Lakes Motorsports next year. Hopefully that'll be a stable ride. Stringfellow Vincent runs in second place. Andy Lambert managed to get by the other cars, and he runs in third place. After it was announced that Retro 80 Racing would be returning for next season, Stringfellow Vincent's been very confident in his abilities, and he's been up near the top of the practice charts all week. This is Scotty Thomas, former drifting champion, Apparently there is a drifting series in the United States. I was not aware of this before he showed his face here. He was running in the 73 in the qualifier, and he did an admirable job, yet he didn't qualify, but Zach Kovach actually managed to hire a competent driver for a road course for once. He's passing Brendan Kelly there for 18th place. That 14, Louis Ballard's lead has slipped down to almost nothing over Stringfellow Vincent. Louis Ballard slips off the track, and Stringfellow Vincent is there to pounce. Stringfellow Vincent pulls on the inside, that number 84 for Retro 80 Racing, doing an awesome job today. He's been up at the front the entire race. He actually qualified in about 12th position. He moves on the inside of Louis Ballard and will take the lead, exiting turn three. Andy Lambert tries to make a move, but he is unsuccessful. Earlier this lap, Rick Phillips gets turned by John Jefferson. He saves the car, however, but he hits the inside wall right there. And that's going to do a lot of right side damage to that car and put him further off the pace than he's already been all day. He was running at about 32nd place when this incident happened. This is super sub driver AJ Murphy driving the number 87 Exide Nemoto for Tom Delgado. Tom Delgado was originally supposed to be in this car, but he fell ill earlier in the week and AJ Murphy stepped in the car. He's a local Ohio short track racer and he's doing a great job here despite never driving on this track before this weekend. He is running at about 21st place. Stringfellow Vincent continues to hold the lead over Louis Ballard. After the announcement that Retro A Racing would be returning, he uh, was full of energy and he thought that he could win this race just because of that announcement. He's trying to prove that point right now. He's leading by about three tenths of a second over Louis Ballard and you see the damaged car of Andrew Tamers and I stand corrected. He did accrue a lot of damage in that lap one incident. He's running well off the pace and will be lapped shortly. Lap 15, Gaspar D'Souza blows up from about 13th place, slows on the front stretch, and he lets a few cars by. However, here comes Cesar Espinoza 
on the inside of the turn. He clips, uh, he clips Gaspar de Souza there, spins him out, and there's Lenny Jacobs to put him on his roof along with Ryan Jeffries. Gaspar de Souza would fall out of the race. He'd be okay after this, but a little shaken up. By lap 16, a large battle has emerged for 7th place between Barry Juveno, Blake Campos, and Sam Smith, and a couple other cars. You see Matthew Bueller, Preston Bell, and Nicholas Corradovo is also racing. Sam Smith is, has taken the 8th place back from Blake Campos, and he needs a great run if he's going to hope to get into the top 30. He's been having abysmal luck this entire season. Stringfellow Vincent gets trapped behind the lapped car of soon-to-be lapped car of Andrew Tamerzan, and he slows up. Louis Ballard makes a move on the inside, and he will take the lead going down this straightaway here. Louis, Louis Ballard, running the second team for Clockwork Lexus, started running at Talladega, and he's been doing phenomenal so far. He's running in about 28th place. And Stringfellow Vincent has to use the access road. He falls down to about 6th place after this. But there is an incident behind this involving the two cars of Sam Smith and Blake Camphausen. Blake Camphausen pushes left into Sam Smith, and they take each other hard into the wall, doing multiple barrel rolls. Both drivers hit that wall at about 160 miles per hour, so that's a really heavy hit for both drivers. No word on their medical conditions as of yet, but they've been transported to a local hospital for further examination. Let's watch it from another camera here. He just turns straight left into Sam Smith, and there's nothing Sam Smith can do about it. They just take each other into the wall. No sign of slowing down by either driver. We're going to go on board Blake Ampausen and see how he just... He just slides over in front. Maybe his spotter told him he was clear or something. We're not exactly sure at the moment. But you see we lose the camera right there as that is a vicious hit for that 51 car. By lap 18, Louis Ballard has opened up a massive lead over Cody Deke, the car who has inherited second place, due in part to Andrew Tamerzan's exceptional blocking abilities as a backmarker. Kenny Gartosa is running in 22nd place, currently doing battle with Sergei Yakovsky for that position. And he will return in some capacity in this car. He owns the 45, which is being driven by Cesar Espinoza. They both have the same sponsorship, although that car is a Volpe and this one's a Toyota. Gartosa will return with this team next year, the Golden Gear Racing Group. This is only their second start. This is Johnson Racing with Ryan Jeffries, Greg Maddox, and Samuel Brown. They're running 26th through 28th, doing a terrible job this week. They have been nowhere near the front with all three of these cars. The only two cars that have been up front have been Blake Camphausen and Christopher Loxanen. Cody Deek makes a early green flag pit stop. You see, you will see Nikos Kostopoulos in the pits as well in a few seconds right there. He is repairing some damage on that car. Louis Ballard pits the next lap and he slides a bit off the track, although that's been the case with everybody this weekend. And nearly everybody follows him into the pits. However, in the back, Greg Maddox gets hooked by Lewis Jones, and he will go head-on into the wall, and that will end the day of the 41 car. Tough break for him, although he hasn't been doing all too well himself today. Claire Ossier runs into Isaac Kowalczyk exiting the pits, and that will do a bit of right front-end damage to that car. Cesar Espinoza decides to stay out an extra lap in his number 45, and he's having a good run so far. He's been running in the top 15 all race, and maybe the fact that they're using a Volpe engine would explain that. His team owner is using a Toyota engine. He enters the pits a lap later, followed by Chris Benson, who you'll see in a second here. He's way behind Espinoza, and Louis Ballard will retake the lead. He's got a massive lead over second place. It's about eight seconds or so, and he's just been driving away from the rest of the field. He's just completely checked out by not even a quarter, not even a halfway through this race, excuse me. Another driver who benefited from green flag pit stops is Scotty Thomas, who's running in the top 15 right now. He's battling with Ian Elias for the 15th position. He's going to lose it here. Also, A.J. Murphy in that 87 is doing a spectacular job. He's worked his way up to 17th. He's never driven on this track before, and he's doing a great job in that number 87 for Tom Delgado who should be in that car, but he was sick earlier. This is the battle for 23rd position. This is a very heated battle. They've been beaten and banging and too wide all since green flag pit stops. And you see Tommy Urban, the slower car there, he's been holding them off for a couple laps now, and he is doing a fantastic job in that 22. He's running in 23rd position right now. And that's probably, I think that's the best run for this team so far this year that 22 flame racing team. Unfortunately, a lot of close racing starts wrecks. 
Lewis Jones pushes into Ryan Griffin, and then he gets turned by Samuel Brown into the inside wall. Really hard hit for the 0-1 car of Lewis Jones. The entire front end got ripped off of that car. He got out of that car with some assistance from the officials, and he is okay. This is Nicholas Corodovos, who's running in fifth position. He's had a very good run thus far, a very quiet run. He hasn't been near anyone, so he's been slowly working his way up through the field. And it looks like somebody just went off there. It might have been his teammate Isaac Kowalczyk battling for second place. Not exactly sure, but good run for the 49 team. Louis Ballard has opened up a massive lead over Cody Deke there in that 32 car. That's about a 8 second lead at this point. Sergei Yakovsky has improved to about 20th place at this point. He's battling with Chris Benson and Craig Taylor for that position. And this car has slowly been working its way up through the field after getting turned out of 9th on lap 9 by Blake Kamphausen, who recently fell out, as you saw earlier. This car is quite fast, but he just has a bit of damage, and he's working his way slowly up through the field. Cody Deke, however, is quite damaged. He's got a bit of hood damage on that car from when he slammed into Isaac Kowalczyk on about lap four. He's not the fastest car, and Isaac Kowalczyk apparently didn't appreciate that, and he gives a little retaliation. He bumps him out of the way, but is unable to make a move on that 32 car. This 32 car, even though he's got a bit of damage, is still fairly fast. Him and Claire Ossier, both with damage, are in the top three at this point. Another intense battle has opened up back in the field for the all-important position of, you guessed it, 23rd place. Seems to be a re reoccurring theme this race. Lenny Jacobs takes the position from Kenny Gartosa, who has to go wide, because Ryan Griffin decides to make it three wide. Good battle there, even though it's really for a trivial position. Steve Johnson is running in the top 15, however he gets turned by Cesar Espinoza. Johnson saves the car, slams into the inside wall, loses the car again, and spins into the guardrail across the track. Not really sure what he's doing there, but the car is very damaged. He damaged both the right side and the rear of that car. He's very slow, as you can see right here. This is the same lap, and Samuel Brown decides to just put him out of his misery and turns him into the inside wall. That would take the 900 car out of this race, and he's been kind of a moving chicane after getting himself locked into the show after the 46 and the 24 team suspended operations. 21 car pits from second place, a potential puncture on that car brought Claire Ossier into the pits. With Ossier out of the way now, Isaac Kowalczyk decides it's time to take second place. He sets up Cody Deke and makes him run turn three wide, and he makes a diving pass on the inside, and he'll take second place, exiting turn three, entering the S's. This is Barry Juvano running in fifth place. He is trying to extend his championship lead over Ryan Jeffries, which has fallen down to 12 points. He's run a very solid race thus far, a very lonely race, running in fifth place. He hasn't really been battling with too many cars, but he's had a really fast car. Maybe that's why. This is his teammate, Chris Benson, who's been running mid-pack. He's about 17th at this point. However, it's a major improvement over how he ran at Mexico City, where he finished mid-30s. Isaac Kowalczyk and Nicholas Korodovos. Korodovos managed to get by Kowalczyk for the second position. They are, le they are legends in Europe in the Euro Rally Championship. They, are, they were the stuff of legends in the early 2000s, beaten and banging for each other for wins and championships, and now they're getting a chance to show that true rivalry flair here at Decatur Speedway. And this is a treat that the fans won't be able to see for long, because Kowalczyk is going back to rallying. Kurodovos pushes Kowalczyk wide, entering the final turn, and he will take the second position. He drives away from Kowalczyk and Deke, he will hold second place for the time being. One driver who's been having an exceptional run today is Craig Taylor in this 36 Ford. Well, it's the factory Ford team. He just got passed for 19th and 20th. However, this car has been, he's been driving this car far beyond its bounds. He's making it, the equipment look much better than it actually is. So props to him, the widely considered to be the third best rookie in the field. Louis Ballard has opened up a massive lead by lap 34, four laps. 14 laps remaining in the race at this point. Running in the top 10 is Christopher Loxanen here in the 31. 
This is the last remaining Johnson Racing car that is still in the top 10. He has yet to fall off like the rest of his teammates, and he's giving that car a good run in the top 10. Casey Lester, I mentioned him earlier when he slid off. He's going to Great Lakes Motorsports next year to drive the 44, which is currently being driven by Ryan Griffin, He'll, which is who is actually right in front of him. Ike Durbin will be his teammate. Ike Durbin attempted this race in the 0-2. He didn't make it, but he was impressing, running in front of his teammate in what is widely considered to be the second car at that team. Louis Ballard brings his car into the pits on lap 37. He is pitting early along with Cody Deke in that 32 car. Isaac Kowalczyk takes the lead. He's got a pretty big lead. He managed to distance himself from Barry Juveno, who took second place and now he's just kind of putzing along, running up front, trying to lead as many laps as he can before Louis Ballard pulls out of the pits again and takes the lead back. However, the next lap, Isaac Kowalczyk leads Barry Juveno, Preston Bell, and Nicholas Corodovos into the pits. The top four have managed to separate themselves from Christopher Loxon and the rest of the field. They bring themselves into the pits most of the field. Back further, uh, Sergei Yakovsky, I guess, wasn't happy with how Craig Taylor is driving against him, and he bullies him into the pit wall. However, Craig Taylor would continue on without too much of a problem. Louis Ballard has opened up a massive lead yet again. He is just driving away from the field, and unless he has a mechanical failure or something goes horribly awry with that car, he is going to win this race. Isaac Kowalczyk battle has worked his way into second place. He's battling with Cody Deke. Cody Deke sweeps by, Barry Juveno has entered this battle, and Cody Deke will take second spot, but that is a fierce battle, and Claire Osir has entered that battle as well for second place. This is Cesar Espinoza, still running in the top 15. He's, have a, he's had a great race thus far, and he actually makes a pass here on for Matthew, uh, excuse me, on Matthew Bueller for 12th place. Another driver having a really good run at this point is A.J. Murphy, who's moved his way up into the top 15. He's currently running in 14th place in this 87 car. He's kept his nose clean just like he did in the qualifier. His teammate, however, is running back in about 26th place. He is not performing as well as expected. John Jefferson, his teammate, he is battling with Ryan Griffin, Kenny Gartosa, and Nate Lorenz for that position, and he is not impressing at all. He is very... Under, he is uh, underachieving at this point. Rick Phillips in the number 16 for Tenere Research Development is going a lap down with only six laps to go to Louis Ballard. He tries to let him by, but for some reason he decides to race him a bit. Louis Ballard goes off the track a bit, but he still manages to hold the... He still manages to keep that 16 car lap down. Cody Deke has lost touch with the main pack, and he is battling for 7th place, I believe that's 7th place, with Stringfellow Vincent Cameron Taylor and Brendan Kelly. Cameron Taylor and Kelly have fallen back a bit, so it looks like it's between Deke and Vincent for 7th position at this point. Kowalczyk is coming to lap Rick Phillips with just 2 laps to go. He makes the pass on Phillips, however Phillips decides to race him hard, and he passes him. Kowalczyk has to check up entering the snake, and that allows Corodovos and Barry Juveno to get by him for the top two positions. Well, second and third, I stand corrected. Corodovos is having trouble getting by Phillips now, who is being a moving chicane in the S's. So, uh, this is trouble brewing here. Corodovos manages to get by the 16, who's been all over the place. He's the first one of the leaders to get by, and he'll hold second place. Unfortunately for Corridovos, he overdrives the snake and allows his teammate Kowalczyk to get by as well as Barry Juveno for that position. Claire Osir makes a dive bomb pass on much older tires than everybody else. She moves her way up to fourth, exiting turn three on the final lap. Claire Osir has moved up into the top five in that car on much older tires than everybody else is running. This is Louis Ballard, and this is the amount of space he has between him. He's run a very lonely race for the past... 30 odd laps. Isaac Kowalczyk will take second place as he holds off Barry Juveno, but your winner today is Louis Ballard, who has driven an excellent race all race long. He will win at Decatur. As I mentioned before, Isaac Kowalczyk comes home second, Barry Juveno third. Claire Osir manages to rally on older tires to fourth place. Preston Bell rounds out the top five. 
Nicholas Corradovos, despite running second, entering the final lap, fell back to sixth. Cameron Taylor managed to get by Cody Deke for seventh. Cody Deke himself finished eighth, Brendan Kelly ninth, and Andy Lambert tenth. I'd like to give a shout out to Stringfellow Vincent for an amazing run. He ended up finishing 13th behind his teammate Matthew Bueller in 12th. Still an awesome run for that team overall.